Uh, thanks for having me here tonight. I, I'm excited to speak to you. The subject matter, however, um, we'll see how it goes, goes over. I got asked to speak, and I said, well, what do you want me to speak about? And they said, can you speak about technology and communication? And I know what parents were thinking. Can you tell our kids to stop being on the phone so much, get out of the video games, and get offline? And so I apologize, teens. Please don't roll your eyes. Just see where I'm going with it. I, I promise it's not going to be another lecture from an adult telling you to get off your phone. Um, the, this subject, uh, it, it's not easy to speak about because it, it's something, it's a train that we're not going to stop, right? Technology, communicating through technology, um, the success of our teenagers when they become adults, it's, it's all this big discussion, right? It's this big debate that all of, anybody been involved in that debate? Any teens here rolled your eyes because your parents told you to get off your phone? Raise your hands. A few, right? And so we've got the old people and we've got the young people and this debate in the middle where we don't know what to do with technology because everything involves technology now, right? We have, on the one hand, more communication than we've ever had in our lives. But then on the other hand, we're communicating in a way that sometimes isn't very effective and cuts out the very essence of what relationship is. And so to find that medium is kind of a difficult, difficult task. It's a difficult task for everyone. Um, in my practice, as you guys heard, I'm a therapist. I work with teens, which means I work with their parents. And so every now and again, I get a teen that comes in. And one of the fears for you teens is that your technology and communicating through that and getting addicted to that is going to make you more depressed or more anxious. It's not going to set you up for success, right? And so every now and again, I get a teen come, come in and they've been bullied online or they've been broken up with over a text message or some other you know, tragic event has taken place. They've seen their friends. Um, go to fun things that they weren't included in and they become depressed or they become anxious and they come to me and they say, well, what do I do? How do I get better, right? Does anybody know what I first tell them? Anybody? I say, stop looking. Stop using it. And they look at me and go, well, what do you mean? Stop. Yeah, stop looking at the thing that's harming you. And I've yet to have a teen go, that is a great idea, Brandon. I will do that. They just don't do that, right? They say, you gotta have something else, Brandon, because that's not gonna happen. I'm not going to do that. So we as adults have to realize that, you know, just stopping isn't the answer, okay? Um, it's not going to happen. Again, this train keeps going. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a, uh, a little anecdote about myself. This is how old I am, guys. Okay, you know, so anybody use Snapchat still? Anybody know what that is? Okay, I don't even know if that's still used. I put my head in the sand. So my wife is a little bit younger than me, and when I met her, when we started dating, she, she begged me to get on Snapchat, so she talked to me, right? And so she sends me a Snapchat, the first one I ever got. And she already set me up with friends and everything else, and it was dinging or doing something at me, and I would ignore it. But I had to answer this Snapchat, so I pressed it, I got sidetracked, and I came back to it, and what happened to it? What's that? It's gone. So then what do you think happened? My wife's ticked at me for not reading her, seeing her message and responding, and I didn't know what to do. So in some ways, I'm not the one to talk to you guys. My wife, I got off Snapchat. It was, a, it was an argument for about a week, but I never went back, and I'm so glad. Um, but the truth is, this, this, this topic's really important. Um, we're not going to stop it. The current push... Uh, for online is even extending into therapy, okay? The current push for telecommunicating rather than in-person communicating even has, is knocking at my door, and I'm not going to participate in that because there is a time for telecommunication. There's a time for Snapchat, your online, um, all of your online social media, and getting immersed in that world, and there's a time for social interaction, actual, real, like, talk to social interaction. Clubs like this I is, is, is something that's going away, right? There's not many of these organizations that are setting young men up and young women up for success. And part of that is because everything's shifting. We don't like talking in person anymore, to some extent, especially the younger generation. Um, 
On the one hand, human interaction will never go away. So those parents who think that it's going to be that, become that game, you know, that uh, movie, Ready Player One, that's unrealistic. That will never happen. But we do need to find more of a balance, okay? The, the pendulum right now is swinging this way. But the way that it's knocking at a therapist's door is that anybody heard of teletherapy? I got asked to join a teletherapy um, organization. I said, absolutely not. And, and they were very confused as to why. And it's because 99% of everything that gets better is because there's human interaction in my office. Okay? No offense if anybody's doing teletherapy, but the st studies show that it's making some companies a lot of money, but it isn't helping anybody get over mental health issues. Okay? It's virtually useless. I know that's why if there's some therapists in here using it, I apologize if that's what your practice is based in. But that goes to show you that without human interaction, we're not the same people, right? Without that touch, without that face-to-face -face reading, the micro um, uh, movements in our faces, without that right in front of you, some things can't be fixed. And so I want you guys to keep that in mind. Um, technology helps though, right? Okay? We can't get rid of te technology and communicating. We can't get rid of it. We don't want to get rid of it. Right now, there is somebody sitting in this room who without it wouldn't have connected to the world. And so for some of you parents who go, get off your phone, get off your phone, get off your phone, okay? Hold back, just, just take a break before you just say, hey, get off your phone. For those of, so there are some teens sitting here right now who have made a friend, who are learning communication, who are learning to interact with people outside of their anxieties, right? <laughs> because it's more anxious, it's more anxiety ridden to face somebody in person than it is behind the veil of technology. And so if we can use that and parlay that into real interaction, we're really gonna be getting somewhere. We're actually gonna raise teens who are better than ever, okay? Um, but one of the, the benefits is that some people connect in ways that they've never, they would not have connected otherwise. Um, it also helps with courage and confidence, believe it or not. We know that some of our teens, because they have the ability to use technology, they're socially better. I know that's why. That's not the message I'm supposed to bring to you guys today. Okay? But with balance, this thing, all this social media, all the texting, and all the emailing actually brings more confidence because you can take chances that you might not have taken before. Um, it can, it can be a way. So all you teens sitting here, okay? You can probably remember a time you maybe wanted to confront somebody or you wanted to ask a girl out or you wanted to um, confront a coach about a position on a team. And believe it or not, if you can get your way, your, yourself, to start using some of the social media, some of the technology to take those chances, you're pushing yourself. Now the opposite is true if you're somebody who hides behind the technology, right? Some of you sitting here have gotten so anxious about personal conversation, okay, saying something that people are going to make fun of you for, okay, talking outside of the veil of technology, that you're doing yourself a disservice. And so there's that balance. I can't tell you what that balance is, but you know it because when you're pushing yourself, you feel it inside here. Okay? When you're hiding behind technology, you know it deep down. You know that you are not being courageous, that you're not building your confidence. And one of the greatest ways to build your confidence, one of the greatest ways to push yourself socially and become somebody who can speak about technology and communication for a whole bunch of teens in a room, is fail. Fail miserably at a lot of conversations. Okay? Go talk to girls and fail. Have them kind of laugh at you every now and then. It's okay. It's okay. okay it happens. <laughs> Go to your coach and stand up to him and have him look at you like he doesn't even know what you're talking about. The more you take chances outside of technology to speak, the greater communicator you're going to be. You cannot become great without failure. Technology is kind of like a crutch. And so I'm all for crutches. I'm all for building that self-esteem, doing the practice as long as you take it to the next level. Okay. Um, the 
there's this thing going on with technology, okay? It's texting, right? Social media, like I said, the Snapchat, which is the bane of my existence. I've never done anything so terrible in my life. It, it is um, Facebook Messenger, which teens don't do, but your, your parents still think you're using Facebook, so you pretend. It's Instagram, it's all these other things that I probably have not guessed. Every week there's something new. But the use of technology actually becomes addictive. Okay, and that's not just for teens, that's for every person on the face of the planet. And a lot of people don't understand why it becomes addictive. So this is an example of when technology goes awry in our communication. If you're depending on it, and you know you're hiding, if you're one of those people that's hiding from the world, if you are scared to feel failure, you are at risk for becoming addicted to technology, becoming addicted to only being able to talk with um, your text messages and your messengers and different things. Okay. Now the addiction happens because you get so comfortable and it becomes so easy, even though there's consequences. And maybe you, you didn't get the girl because you were not courageous enough to actually go outside and talk in person, right? Or maybe you feel really bad because you're alone in your room and you don't know why you don't have actual friends around you, right? Even though you suffer, addiction is I feel comfortable in my misery. I don't want to sacrifice and feel uncomfortable to get out of my misery. Okay? And if anybody can relate to that today, it is time to turn off your technology, even though it's not all bad. For you, it is all bad for right now. Okay? And that's a hard message to give some people. Once I realize somebody's addicted, the one thing that's going to help them is the very thing that they do not want to do, which is turn it all up. Okay? If you haven't reached that addiction point, find a balance even if you don't want to. Okay? Um, when it comes to addiction, that's what leads to the next real big problem with too much uh, communicating through technology, and that's depression. Right? Not to bring this party down today, but there are some people who are maybe not depressed because of communicating through technology, but they're unable to get better because of their reliance on technology. Okay? And their reliance on, in the moment they feel good because they're talking to their video game friends, right? And they've got the, the earpieces on, and they don't want to go outside of that because it reminds them of the skills that they maybe don't have. Okay? And the only way to combat that, again, is to get uncomfortable. Take the earphones off. And that's something that parents are never going to talk your kids into. You actually get counterproductive, right? Because you keep nagging them, and then they dig in, dig in, dig in. I don't know what the balance is. I don't know how to get through when somebody is depressed. But the number one thing that keeps people from getting out of depression and then leads to depression is that feeling of loneliness. And as connected as you might feel when you're texting constantly, messaging constantly, and on video games where you can hear the voice of others and you're shooting things up, as, as much as that feels like you're connected, there becomes a point that you're actually not connected and you feel lonely without it. And that's where that depression. Now the anxiety sometimes gets brought in because you don't build your social skills, right? You're not good at talking to others, so what happens? You become anxious all the time because you can't get out of the fact that to live on this planet, you're gonna interact with humans, okay? Um, the, there's a couple reasons, teens. If you're sitting here going, rolling your eyes, and you're going, okay, yeah, I've heard this stuff before, I get it. Someone can play my video games and I'm still not gonna to talk to my friends without text message. I get it, okay? But there's two really good reasons to consider finding more of a balance for you tonight, okay? So these two reasons I'm gonna, I'm gonna hopefully kind of rope you in with. We'll see them, okay? Um, the first is, you know, how many of you, this is like a, an elite group of young men, right? Pretty much, you don't just show up for something like this and volunteer in the community unless you're, you know, you're a good person. So most, most of you teens here are pretty good people. You're, you're the elite, so I can kind of say this. And so in a second, I'm going to talk about the whole job, success, school thing. But there's something more important. There's a reason more important than any other for reducing your reliance on technology. Okay? Because um, I have met you before, right? I remember you. He's a good man. 
Um, can you guess what I'm talking about? The reason to reduce technology? <laughs> Who are you sitting with? Who are you sitting with right now? Who's your right and your left? Your girlfriend. Okay, good. I'm glad that's your girlfriend. <laughs> um, women. Teens? Women. Okay? Some of you right now, you text and, and your, your girlfriends or the girls you want to be your girlfriends, they text too and it's great. But every year that you get older, young men, you're going to have to rely less and less on technology. I don't care what year it is. At the end of the day, the women that you want to attract, the women that you want to hold you up as a great man, need human contact. They want you to look at them in the eyes. They want you to be a social genius, believe it or not. Okay? Now, you can be a social genius without being the coolest guy in town. You can be a social genius without being the best looking. You can get really good at communication, young men, being just who you are. The first step to becoming brilliant with the ladies, okay, just this one lady and nobody else, <laughs> is own who you are. Okay? I'm a man with many quirks, and uh, my, my wife calls me a dork at least three times a day. And at the end of the day, because I've owned who I am, I don't mind my failures. Every time I say something weird, say something that's embarrassing, I own it, I laugh about it, I'm okay with it. And if you can do that, you just took the next step into finding balance, into being what I call a social genius. Okay? The next step is practice. Okay? You get zero practice when you're texting. You get zero practice. I don't care if you, it feels like it's kind of mimicking real life. You get zero practice at picking up on women, getting dumped by women, knowing the perfect thing to say, and all the things that come with women online. You have to fail. You have to practice, practice, practice. So talk, 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 talk. Okay? Now, the third piece to being a social genius, does anybody know what it is? No? There's one more really important piece. Don't talk so much. Be quiet. Listen more than you speak. Okay? Now, parents, I just gave you a little clue on how to get more out of your children, by the way. I know you feel like you're nagging and your constant lectures are helping, but if you do it once, let it alone, you plant it a seed, and it's going to last longer. But young men in here, trust me, how, if you talk less, you actually get the last point across, okay? There's this rule of thumb I have that, that I was taught in debate. I, I, I went to Servite, if anybody goes to Servite. And I'll never forget, my debate coach said, um, never have the last word. Isn't that wild? Never have the last word. Let everybody else have the last word, and they are going to remember what you said. And I don't know why it works, but it's worked thus far in my life. Parents, hint, hint. Kids, do you want to get more of what you want from your parents? Hint, hint. But speak less, never have the last word. Find that confidence to be who you are. Don't worry about making a fool of yourself. Make a fool of yourself. Fail miserably, and you are going to become a genius. Socially. Okay? Um, I told you, there's going to be two reasons. Two reasons you guys want to reduce your reliance on technology. Okay? The second, raise your hand if you are geared up and trying to become a successful young man who can pay all his own bills. Come on, raise your hand. Okay. Everybody wants to pay their own bills in here, right? Who really, really wants to rely on mom and dad until they're 28? Right? Okay. The fact is, is, there's a lot of people who are going to tell you that technology and getting jobs doesn't go hand in hand. And well, it does, okay? For, to some extent, you need to be good at all this stuff, communicating through Messenger and, and through Facebook and through Instagram, because there are a lot of jobs, and as we get older, um, you, you're going to need to be good at that. But that is only the beginning. Eventually, you have to face people. Eventually, you actually ha they, they don't want to know the perception you're able to put on. They don't want to know what's online and what is well thought out before you send it, what they really want to know is who the heck is this guy? 
So at some point, if you haven't built the social skills, if you haven't practiced and failed, practiced and failed at communicating with people, what happens is, is someday somebody who wants to hire you or may want to hire you has to meet you. And there's a turnoff. If you don't know how to be social, if you can't put yourself out there in person, what happens is they're not going to tell you to your face, hey, you know, we're not going to use you for this job or we're not going to hire you. They just kind of file it in the back of their minds. And then the guy who seems like he just doesn't care, and maybe he even says something really not smart in the presence of this person, but has the confidence to make through it, and is able to be social, and is able to keep talking, and, and listens, by the way. What happens is that person is more successful in the long run. Okay? So the fact is, is in, in the, the reality that you guys are going to live in, in the age that you're going to live in when you're trying to get the women and get the jobs, right? Because that's what everything comes down to for men. Get the women, get the job. The fact is you're going to have to become brilliant at both communicating through technology, but balancing that out in person. And if you're hiding behind things, not only are you prone to depression, not only are you going to be more likely to have an anxious kind of um, demeanor about you, but you are going to have to, okay? You are going to have to work harder than those people who are able to talk, to communicate in person, okay? Now, a few um, tips. Number one, look at people in the darn eyes, okay? Don't look down. Look at people in the eyes. Again, tell yourself, it's okay if I say something stupid. It's okay if I say something <laughs> stupid. Um, be aware of yourself. If your voice cracks, that's okay. If you struggle with the jitters, right? Don't let that take you out. Even make a comment about it. Man, talking to you, right? That's, that's uh, one of the greatest lines ever, by the way, for talking to a girl. You make me so nervous. I never get this nervous. Oh my gosh. Right? Go on. And being somebody who's hired a lot of people, has, has owned a few companies, I can tell you that when I'm talking to somebody who's real, who has flaws, who is talking to me, and I can see that they're really nervous and sweating bullets, but they're doing it anyways, and they keep eye contact, and they're even aware enough to say something, what happens is that's the person I always want to hire. That's the person I want to work with. Okay, that's the person who's setting themselves up for success in my companies that I so, the last just kind of um, message that, that I want to make sure you guys leave here with is um, to the parents, take a step back. Don't be so afraid of technology because your fear is going to push them into dig kind of digging in and they're not going to listen to the wisdom that you have. Young men, number one, your parents have a lot of wisdom here to offer you. Don't reject it just because they're saying something you don't want to hear, like, hey, get off your phone, get off your phone, get off your phone. If you can find a balance and you can learn to do both, I guarantee more success. Those who can find that balance will be the people running the companies, the CEOs, the general managers of the, the greatest restaurants in the world. Okay. But you have to have both, all right? So I appreciate you guys allowing me to give this message. And I hope you have a great day. Okay.